Good morning in Carpe Diem. February 2nd, Groundhog's Day. Yes, and Puxatani Phil did not see his shadow, so we will be having an early spring. In Utah, it is raining, and I doubt that our guy will see his shadow, so same for us. Um, today is Ayn Rand Day. Ayn Rand was a philosopher of objectionism. She once said, my philosophy in essence is the concept of man as a heroic being with his own happiness as the moral purpose of his life with productive achievement as his noblest activity and reason as his only absolute. Um, she also was an author. She wrote Atlas Shrugged and several others. And I could really relate it to her as a child, I would run up and down the hills playing to be a knight and George Washington and Lafayette with my brother donning a stick sword and a cape made of a towel or a quilt. Um, here's a picture, early picture of me on a pony dressed as a knight. So it's always been a, a thing for me. Um, February 2nd is also National Ukulele Day, where Red Day, in order to bring attention to heart disease and help eradicate that, people were wear red. I wore something with some red in it. I don't have red. Um, so today is also Tater Tot Day. I remember that being a big deal in Napoleon Dynamite. Um, but I do love those crunchy treats. It's also Brown Dog Day, Crepe Day, Marmot and Hedgehog Day. And in honor of it being Black History Month, I want to recommend reading How to Be an Anti-Racist by Ibram X. Rondi. And end with a little excerpt from my book, Ripples. Please excuse the, the use of the word, the N-word, as um, it is not something I ever do. But as a kid, I had not been raised to know anything except fear brought about by an incident with my grandfather, which I will include here. Um, there's a good chance that my mouth dropped open when I first met Gumdrop. She was so very lovely. She made the rest of us appear oversized, awkward, and dumpy. She had huge brown eyes and dark curly eyelashes the likes of which I had never before seen except on a hand-painted china doll. Her natural beauty rounded, resounded with the innocence of childhood, perhaps because she had short little pigtails sticking out above her ears, and her skin was as dark as night. Now, this was when I was introduced to the members of the, the gospel band that I was going to be singing with and playing music with. So then, as far as I could remember, this was the first time I had ever been in the same room with a black person, much less spoken with one. My mind flashed back to my brother and I ending our petty childhood standoffs with the rhyme, eeny, meeny, miny, mo, catch a nigger by the toe. If he hollers, let him go, he out goes Y-O-U. My grandfather, living in Washington, D.C., we were visiting, hearing our exchange, had pulled his car over on the shoulder of the road, turned back toward us, red-faced and wagging his finger, and yelled, he never yelled, don't you ever say that again, you could be shot. We had no idea who was going to shoot at us, but from then on we ended our spats by catching a tiger. I never forgot Grandpa's warning that I had better be careful how I spoke about black people, and I wasn't at all sure what to say to one, especially one named Gumdrop. And again, this is from my book, Ripples. If you're interested, Amazon and Audible both carry it, as well as my other books. Carpe diem. Have a great day.